So in the two previous videos, we have seen the UiPath Advanced Certification and its topics. In this video, we are going to finish the first topic, UiPath Studio. Let's jump right in. Okay, so the third question in this topic is, a developer created a process to capture caller data from a call center application. The process is designed to help a call center employee enter details about a call into an Excel sheet. For instance, when a call is received, the employee starts the attended robot. The robot contains four sub-processes. Search for the caller by caller ID using an HTTP request and retrieve data such as name, address, email, support history. Save the retrieve caller information in an Excel sheet. In a web application, create a new history entry for the caller. Upload the Excel sheet and then submit the form. Send a Microsoft Outlook email with the confirmation. Which sub-process requires modification to some of the property default values of activities to ensure it runs in the background? Okay, so a lot of times you will have a question that have a lot of uh, writing, but the only uh, relevant thing that you need to understand is actually parts of the question. For example, in here, the question actually starts from the sub-process. You can just uh, read the robot contain four sub-processes and then you will understand the, 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 the question perfectly. So for this specific question, uh, we have four steps and we need to find the step where we don't have to modify anything and the process is still going to work in the background, meaning that three steps are going to happen in the background no matter what. And one step, we need to modify it in order for it to happen in the background. OK, so let's start with step number one. OK, so the first step is uh, search for the caller by caller ID using an HTTP request and retrieve data such as name, etc. So this step is going to happen in the background no matter what, because we have an HTTP request to the call center application. So you know that there are going to be APIs happening in the background. And these APIs, no matter what you do, they are never going to happen in the foreground. It's not a user interface uh, interaction. It's more like a background thing that happens where you just want to retrieve data. So this step is definitely going to happen in the background. So it's the wrong answer. Let's go to the second step. Save the retrieved caller information in an Excel sheet. By the way, if we go to the first step, if you want to know how it happens in UiPath, uh, just go to Manage Packages, select All Packages, and here look for UiPath.web. And you are going to have uh, this uh, UiPath.web API, the activities, and click on Install and Save. And here look for HTTP, and you will have this, uh, this activity that you can configure in order for you to make API calls. Uh, to get information. So this is how it works, and it, it's not an activity that works in the foreground. So the first uh, answer is definitely wrong. The second uh, step is save the retrieved caller information in an Excel sheet. So whenever we are saving something into an Excel sheet, we are using the native activity in UiPath, uh, save uh, right range, for example right range workbook for example this activity works in the background and we don't need to do anything in order for it to to uh, to to work in the background even sometimes even if it opens the the excel sheet it still doesn't do anything in, in the user interface it happens in the background even if you're seeing the excel sheet it happens in the background there's nothing to see in it the third answer is uh, or the third step uh, in a web application, create a new history entry for the caller, upload the Excel sheet, and then submit the form. So as you can see here, we have a web application. We have a, a new history entry, meaning that we have a form that we need to uh, fill. Uh, upload the Excel sheet and then submit the form. So we have a form and we need to upload an Excel sheet. And we know that we are going to be opening a web application. So immediately we can see that we have a web application. We have a form. So there is a UI interaction. There is a user interface interaction. So we know that this is going to be happening in the foreground, or there is a huge chance that you it's going to be happening in the foreground if we don't modify the properties that we have in open browser or use application browser. As we said in the first video, UiPath mm -hmm. works with uh, the version 2021.10. So we are still working with the classical experience. So let's choose classic and the activity responsible for open application. 
the activity responsible for any uh, user interface application is the open application activity. And whenever we are playing with clicks and type intos and uh, any type of activities like this, they are going to happen in the foreground. So we have to actually modify in the properties to make them happen in the background. So this is the right answer. Sending an Outlook email uh, with the confirmation. This happens in the, in, the, in the background. We just need to use a send email, activity send Outlook email. So uh, as you can see, uh, one, two, and four happens in the background. Three, it doesn't happen in the background by default. We have to modify the, uh, the properties in order for it to happen in the background. Here you can search something that is called web driver that makes you have any type of web interaction in the background. You can search that. It's not going to be helpful for uh, your uh, certification, but it's going to be helpful if you want to make a web interaction happens in the background. So you can search for that. We can have a video about that later on, but not now. Okay, so here we have the third question as the right question. Let's go to the next one. So this is the next uh, question. A developer has configured the activity project settings for a UI automation and an element exists activity in the project shown below. So here we have configurations for the project settings. So the general project settings, we can access it by going here, by going to project and going to the gear icon here. We can access the, the UI automation classic or the UI automation modern. We can access the configurations and also modified the uh, activity UI element exists. So the activity element exists. He modified it using this timeout 5000, which means five seconds. So assuming the element is already loaded, so it's loaded, how much time will pass before the element exists activity is executed and in debug mode? So we are working in debug mode. How much time? Uh, will pass before the element exists activity is executed. Okay, so as you can see here, we have the debug volume that we have here. So we're not gonna look at this, we are going to look at this. The delay before, because this is what the robot is waiting for before the, uh, the, uh, the execution. So 200 uh, milliseconds is what we are waiting. And here we have five seconds. So element exists, we wait for five seconds if the element is not loaded. Here we have the elements already loaded, meaning that we are going to wait this value and this value is not going to be relevant since the, since the element is already uh, in the screen. So meaning that we are going to wait 200 milliseconds. So the right answer in here is 200 milliseconds. This is a quite easy question to be fair. Okay, so let's go to the next question. So we already talked about state machine and state activity in the previous video. You can go back and watch that if you want. But here, what is the characteristic of the final state in a state machine? So we have three things that we have to remember about state machines. There is the state machine workflow, the type of the workflow. We have the state activity and we have the final state. So uh, let's read the answers. What is the characteristic of the final state? A final state can only transition to another final state activity. This is wrong. We have to see why. Must have at least one transition configured from the final state. From the final state. Also, that's wrong because the final state is basically the final state. There is no further transitions. A final state contains the transitions and the exit sections. We are going to verify that. A state must be connected to a final state. Let's see about that as well. So here we have two choices that are wrong. This is the first one and the second one for obvious reasons. But uh, we are going to see about the third and fourth uh, options in uh, the workflow. So here, let's create a, a new uh, state machine workflow. Let's uh, put a state activity in here. So we have the state activity. Let's connect it here. And let's have a final state in here. So let's connect this state to the final state. And let's open the final state. As you can see, the final state only have the entry. It doesn't have the exit. It doesn't have the transition. It doesn't have destinations or whatever. It only has the entry. 
So let's go back to the question. A final state contains the transitions and the exits sections. So this is wrong as well. Let's go back and actually read the first and second choices just to make sure. A final state can only transition to another final state. There are no transitions in the final state. So wrong. Must have at least one transition configured from, from the final state. As we said, from the final state, there are no transitions. So wrong as well. So we are uh, left with a state must be connected to a final state. This is the right answer. It should be. And actually, I didn't understand this answer right away. Because in my head, a state, a random state, should not be connected to a final state. It could be connected to another state. Let's delete this. Let's put a state in here. See? And then, this state can be connected to a final state. Or, we can have this state connected here. We're going to create an infinite loop, but it doesn't matter. So a state, a random state, shouldn't be uh, by design connected to a final state. So I didn't understand this, this answer right away in my head for some reason, but the actual answer is a state in the state machine activity, at least one state must be connected to a final state. So what they mean is at least one state should be connected to a final state. Because if we put a final state in here, this final state is not going to serve for anything. So we have to connect at least one state to it in order for us to basically make this final state work. So we have to at least connect one state from the state machine to the final state in order for us to uh, get the uh, functionality of the final state. So this is what they mean, at least one state must be connected to a final state in a state machine activity. So, so yeah, this is the right answer in this case, and three uh, other options are wrong. So now we have finished the topic number one. In the next video, we're going to talk about the second topic for the certification. Catch you guys on the next one. Peace.